Hi guys. So, um, welcome to the first uh, academic live class that we have on CR. We're discussing bone tumors today. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so how this is going to be is I will talk about the general approach that you need to have. So, first I'll tell you about the general overview. Then we'll go through the individual tumors. All right. So, that's what we are going to be uh, doing. So, this uh, looks scary when we look at the histological classification. But in the end, I want to revisit this slide and use this as a checklist. That do you know how each one of them appears? So, that is why I've kept this slide as a checklist that, you know, in the end, I'm going to just begin now so this is not something you need to memorize but we are just going to go through it towards the end again as a checklist that you know how each one of them appears let's start off and finish these one liners which may be put to you how these will be asked now that they're not going to write any major mcq exam these will come to you as as questions that the examiner will give you when uh, you know you're answering really well you've described the case you've done with the dds you know and then you may be asked these direct questions and if you get them correct you get uh, brownie points so so let's start so anytime we are doing any investigation of a bone tumor the first investigation always which is indispensable, most important you know even if somebody gives you an option that will you do a, an x-ray for a bone tumor or will you do an mri i am giving you both you will still choose an x-ray a bone tumor investigation cannot start or end without a radiograph all right so the first investigation in any case of a suspected bone tumor is going to be an x-ray as far as the best investigation you know after you're done with the x-ray you have narrowed down your differentials most patients will end up getting an mri probably the only exception here where mri is not as good as ct is what tumor where you know you would end up doing a ct scan which is going to be better than the mri and you don't actually need an mri in this tumor and what is that lesion it has a small nidus yeah so we're talking about osteoid osteoma you know so osteoid osteoma is the only lesion where ct is the end game you know you don't even need to do mri if you do an mri it will show you a lot of edema and you might actually misinterpret an osteoid osteoma if you actually do an mri you know so this is where ct is the end game as far as osteoid osteoma is concerned and whenever gold standard is talked about it is going to be biopsy so whenever in doubt when it's an indeterminate lesion on the x-ray indeterminate on mri you know and infection is something in day-to-day -day practice uh you know when we study bone tumor is very simple but a lot of cases in practice infection versus bone tumor is a very big dilemma and in such cases you know never hesitate to say that it is an indeterminate appearance and we should do a biopsy you know so this is where biopsy comes in plays an extremely important role as far as bone tumors are concerned okay but resident level our main job as far as this is concerned it's going to be uh x-ray so uh as far as the one-liners are concerned so the most common bone tumor if somebody will ask you it is always going to be metastasis holds true for liver holds true for brain lung everywhere metastasis are more common than primary lesions right so metastasis is the most is it better now all right. So metastasis is the most common bone tumor. As far as primary bone tumor is concerned, it is multiple myeloma, which is going to be the most common primary bone tumor. Can somebody tell me most common? All of these are just things that we have left behind. But, but you know, uh, still you just want to know just as an introduction i wanted to talk about all of these so it is osteochondroma which is actually the most common benign tumor but is considered to be a, a congenital uh, accident rather than a true benign bone tumor so if true benign bone tumor is to be considered it is osteoid osteoma which is going to be more common okay most chemo radiosensitive is going to be ewing's sarcoma Whereas most chemo radio resistant is going to be osteosarcoma. When we talk about radiation induced tumor, again, it is osteosarcoma, which has radiotherapy as a risk factor. Most common metastasis that we tend to see are to the lungs and it is two tumors, osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma. In fact, something that comes as a spotter, when you look at these metastas metastasis, a lot of times they are going to be 
cavitating metastasis, right? So this is something that you want to keep in mind for screen these patients for metastasis. And bone-to-bone -bone metastasis is Ewing sarcoma, far, far more common for bone-to-bone -bone metastasis. This is something which is important at resident level as well. Okay, so this is about the one-liners. So this is where you will get long answer questions. So if it's a theory exam, it's always a good idea to start by talking about each modalities, right? So you want to start by describing first give a short introduction and after that you talk about this so first i want to talk about theory and after that i want to talk about after that i want to talk about how you approach it as a case if it's given to you as a case all right so both of the things we are going to address now what is the role of a radiograph as far as a bone tumor is concerned okay two planes are what are used okay so there are two planes which are are uh, to be done anytime you're doing a radiograph these two planes have to be 90 degree have to be perpendicular to one another that is something which is very important and one thing that you will be tested and you need to know is you have to include one joint above and below wherever is the tumor suspected always include one joint above and, and below that all right that is something which is very very important all right so this is what you need to um, remember here what is the job of an x-ray it's not to give you the diagnosis no there are three things that you want to do at the end of an x-ray extremely important when you're presenting the case first is is it actually a tumor or non-neoplastic something like an infection something like an infarct so first is neoplastic versus non-neoplastic second you never say benign malignant i think every time you are first describing a bone tumor you would say benign bone tumor malignant bone tumor and the examiner will correct you you never comment on benign malignant what do you say at the end of your report you say it's an aggressive tumor or a non-aggressive tumor right very very important aggressive non-aggressive are the words in your your impression it is never benign malignant and you present your differentials depending on the approach we are going to learn and if multifocal uh, lesion is being suspected again we scan on the x-ray so these are the points that you need to remember as far as an x-ray is concerned so here on the hand x-ray you see multiple uh, lesions in the hand very very typical diagnosis will be multiple enchondromas and we'll dwell more into this MRI, the best investigation done in almost every aggressive lesion, you will supplement it with an MRI. And this is also a long answer question. What is the role? So here I'm going to write a long answer theory question. What is the role of MRI in bone tumors is a very pet theory question that gets asked. So in this, what do you have to remember? So, first of all, what is the protocol? So, usually, you will give contrast in all cases. So, STIR T1, T2, post-GAD, we take in two planes. The two most common planes are coronal and axial. Post-GAD, you might want to do in all planes. Then, when we talk about uh, T1, one scanning T1, whole bone T1 is taken and again I will include one joint above and below and the point of doing this is to look for skip lesions. Do you know the difference between skip lesions and metastatic lesions? What is, what is the difference between a skip lesion and a bony metastasis? What is the definition? Very commonly asked question by the examiner. Anybody wants to take this, you can type it in the chat. No, no answers in the chat. Mets are multiple. No, skip lesions can also be multiple. Skip lesions within the same bone. Exactly. So it's basically looking at the joint. If it is within the bone, it is known as skip lesion. For example, if, if this is a, a bone, you see a primary tumor here. If I see non-contiguous lesion here, non-contiguous lesion here, this is a skip lesion but if i see this is the joint let's say this is femur and this is tibia and now if i see a lesion here this is going to be called as a distant metastasis this is what i will include as m1 in the staging whereas this will not be counted as m1 this is going to be a skip lesion this is what you have to remember so skip lesion is also non-contiguous it is not in continuity the difference is joint if it crosses the joint it becomes metastasis very very important Bohut ye sawal. understood this one question all right right so this is why we are including so this is our mri scanning protocol nowadays we also do diffusion weighted and adc in most cases and i will tell you why we do that so what is the major advantage of an mri first chondroid matrix anybody wants to tell me how chondroid matrix will look on an mri which is the best sequence to pick up a chondroid matrix